into the hill and realize where all the help comes from. We know the of the Father that you have power. We know you are able. Oh, gracious Father, you know all about us. You're the one who made us and you know all about us. Then the heavenly Father, remember to read uh, today. Uh, touch their heart, the heavenly Father, and uh, comfort them in your own way of comfort that only you can do. Then the Master, remember, see the road, oh, gracious Father. Just just help yeah. us to help the Father to yeah. be the church that you would have us to be. Yeah. And yeah. If they have, uh, just to help us to preach the gospel the way yeah. you would have it be preached. Yeah. Help us to sing the Zion song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gracious Father. Yeah. Help us to help the Father to witness yeah. to the lost yeah. uh, this morning. Yeah. Help us to help the Father to feed the hungry yeah. and do all the things that yeah. you have commanded us to do. Then, dear Master, when we have done all we can do and can't do in the mold, give us a home somewhere in your kingdom where we can praise your name throughout the eternal ages. These are all the blessings we ask your Son Jesus' name for your sake. Amen.
Tevin and say it was, it was tough. Yes. I need you to know one thing, that anytime God is up to something, so is the enemy. Yes. And when you have attacks and everything that's coming against you, don't fall apart. Say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Most of the time, that's an indication that you're on the right track. All right, all right. That the enemy knows that if you tap into the power that's been given unto you, yeah. what you have the ability to do, which yeah. is mostly tear down his kingdom. Are right? you yeah. with him? Yeah. And before he'll let you tear down his kingdom, he'll he'll try to discourage you so that so that he can. And then there is sometimes where you ain't doing nothing but messing with yourself. So the enemy got me. Yeah. I wish to have it. But the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee will bow, every yes. tongue must confess. Yes. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you just say Jesus and things around you have to shift and redirect its path. Have I got a witness? Yes. Amen. So I thank you for those, uh, those throwback hymns. Yes. And I want you all to remember... Um, there is no new without the old. Yes. Yes. Have I got a witness in here? Yes. If we do everything new, yes. we never reflect back to the old. Yes. Then all we're doing is trying to repeat something that's already been established. Yes. And if we don't go back to the foundation by which it was established, yes. then all we're doing is wasting time talking loud yes. and saying nothing. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. You don't pray with me today. Amen. Are you excited about Bible study coming this week? Amen. Amen. We're going to take our time. We're going to dig into the Word. In fact, if you want to get a little head start, we're going to start in the first chapter of James. We're going to talk about some things in James. And we're going to study that whole book. So Amen. we're not going to get into a book and then be jumping all over the place. We're going to get a full understanding of the book Hallelujah. that we're studying. Give a chance to ask some questions. Get a chance to break some things down that we may have never saw in a different perspective. All lined up by scripture so that you can always go back and reference it to make sure that we're talking Bible and we're not talking Pastor Rodney. Amen? Amen. 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 So also we will, we need to start our campaign with uh, inviting some folk out to be a part of fellowship. So we have some flyers that I'm, I'll have printed this week and bring them. Bible study on Wednesday. Amen. Let's start circulating. Invite somebody. If you if you invite one person and that person invites one person, if you get 20 guests, three might stay. Amen. Are you Amen. Yes. But if you're proud about what's going on, hmm. share it with somebody. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then let's keep on moving. God's got some great things in store. Yes. And I'm excited about it. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about it. Amen. Can we talk this morning just for a minute? Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell Mama Oregon, don't push me too fast this morning. <laughs> we'll talk about some stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to get out your way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. She, when they want to say, I'll let you know. Amen. I'm, I was wondering. They were standing there. I didn't know if they was getting ready to sing or was they trying to fly to jump on me or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so since I know it's, they want to say, I'm going to move out the way that I'm saying, great God. Amen. 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 And then when I come back, I'll come back and if you all want to get a head start, meet me over in the 19th chapter of Genesis. Y'all you know, know this, I, I wasn't going to move until, until I knew it was finished. Amen. Amen. One thing that I learned, I learned how to be still. Let's venture over into Genesis chapter number 19. Let's look at beginning at verse number 15. If you have it, please stand to your feet. Reverence to God's word. Amen. Verse number 15 starts, it says, At daybreak, the angel urged Lot on, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, 
or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated because the Lord's compassion for him, the men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand, and the hand of his two daughters. They brought him out and left him outside the city. If you jump down to verse number 26, verse 26 says, but Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. If I can, if I can just use for a quick subject today, I just want to use this simple subject as this. Whatever you do, don't look back. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's the memory you do? Don't look back. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Oh, gracious God, our Father, we thank you yet for another day that you've given us, you've blessed us, God, with the kiss of life. You watched over us last night as we slept and as we slumbered. And then, God, you've given us the authority to stand, to rise, shine, and give you the glory. So this morning, we want to say thank you. Then we ask you, God, that you just clear our minds, our hearts, and our spirits to receive a word from you. I'm asking God that you crucify this old flesh of mine, that you take these uh, lips of clay, that you anoint them with just your words, and your words only. Uh, decrease me, Father, and you increase you. Uh, allow your Holy Spirit to speak, and allow it to do what it's been set forth to do. And we thank you, O God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, many of us may be familiar with this particular passage in this story but a lot of times we get stuck at the place where Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt yes. but what I found to be interesting is simply this we, we look at the place where she looked back but we don't look at the place where it all established where it was established to even give her that unction to want to look back have I got a witness um, um, there are many times that many of us we get attached to stuff. We get attached to a lifestyle. We get attached to certain things. We get attached to certain people. And the amazing thing is, it's hard for us sometimes to let those things go and not look back uh, when they are no longer present with us. Have I got a witness? Um, and, and, and it's amazing simply because uh, what happens is you get attached by things, especially stuff. You get attached by those things when you are at a place to where it becomes a part of your DNA. It becomes a part of your sphere of influence, your environment. When it's something that you're exposed to on a regular basis, it's easy for you to become adapted to it without realizing the depth or the magnitude by which you are attracted. Have I got a witness? Amen. 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 We're going to talk about it a little bit deeper uh, in a few minutes. But if you look at this story and you find out how it all started, we all just look at Lot's wife. But I need you to know that Lot had some responsibility in his wife even holding on to stuff so much that she had to look back to see yeah. what was going on. Have I got a witness? Yeah. I, I want to ask the question, how many of you got lots in your life that have put you in a predicament that makes you want to look back at some stuff too? Come on here somebody. Yeah. Your, your lot may not be your husband, but your lot may be your friend. Your lot might be your sister. Your lot might be your brother. Your lot might be somebody. But you have a lot that has exposed you to something yes. Yes. that you have become so comfortable with that you believe that you can't move on with that. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. Amen. I'm going to say something if I don't say nothing. I'm going to say yes. something yes. today. Is that all right? Amen. So now we look and we find out this story. Listen to how this story goes. It's amazing. It's amazing. Simply, Josh, watch this. It's amazing. I can't call myself being uh, significant in your life without sharing with you the things that go on in my life as an encouragement for you to understand you don't have to do what I do as long as you do as I do in order to get the things that I have as long as you know that they're from God. My God. And that was a mouthful right there. That was a mouthful. So listen, when we look at this, we find that Lot himself was Abraham's nephew. And it came a place where 
Lot had gotten into a little whatever, whatever, and so now Abraham had to come and get him. Now, here we find that now God is about ready to elevate Abraham. And so as they began to move, and as God is moving Abraham into the segments of the promise that he had for him, he grabs Lot. Now, it doesn't say that he grabbed Lot, his wife, his kids, but it, there's no way that he's going to grab Lot without bringing his wife and his kids with him. Are you with me? So he grabbed Lot and his family, and then the Bible declared that not only was it him and his family, but it was also his cattle and his herdsmen. Are y'all with me? Can, can we just can we just have a little lesson right here before we get excited and start sweating? Is that all right? So 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 listen. So usually in those days, you can tell the status of a person by how many cattle or how much cattle they had. We got, got a few scholars up in here. Amen. So so if all I had was if all I had was 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 one raggedy sheep. Amen. I, I had a donkey that had three legs. Amen. And I had a cow that can't produce no milk. You know that I ain't too wealthy. I ain't got it going on too much. I, I'm somebody waiting on my EBT card to come in the mail. Hey, hey, man, come on, help me here, somebody. I, hey, huh? I'm, I'm collecting blue chip stamps. Wait, I'm telling my age now. Y'all know about the blue chip stamps. I, 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 I'm, I'm waiting for the sale at Jim Cole and Zoe's. Have I got a witness in there? And Woolworths up there. <laughs> I got some young folks, they don't understand that part yet, but yeah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm at that, I ain't doing too good, I'm, I'm making it, but I don't fit the status quo of, of, of the other folk, but when you got a bunch of cattle, and when you got herdsmen, that's usually an indication you may not be the richest man in the land, but that means that you got some kind of status financially. Amen. So, so it's an indication here that Lot wasn't a poor man because it said that he had his own cattle and he had his own herdsmen. So that means he had enough cattle that he had to have some other folk take care of it because there was too many for him to take care of by himself. Have I got a witness? And I don't know if you know, but even back in those days, folk just didn't work for free. Have I got a witness? So, so listen. So the Bible declared that as they began to move and God is setting this thing up, it said that, 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 that Lot, his cattle, his herdsmen, and Abraham's herdsmen were bickering. They were always in confrontation with one another. And, and ain't that the problem with us folk nowadays? The reason why half of us ain't got more than we got is because we can't get along. Have I got it? Rodney King said it a long time ago, can we all just get along. Have I got a witness? But the problem is this. We get too many folk in one camp and everybody want to be the chief and don't nobody want to be the enemy. Everybody want to make the calls but don't nobody want to do the work. Have I got a, everybody wants to sit in the king chair but don't nobody want to get their hands dirty and I need you to understand that it doesn't matter what my social status is. I still should be considered a servant no matter where I am. Amen. So, so Lot and Abraham now begin to have a conversation. You can, you can find all of this over in the, starting in the 11th chapter, moving on up. And they begin to have a conversation. And in this conversation, Abraham told him, he said, listen here, son, nephew, uh, 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 we can't roll together like this because there's just too much going on. Are you with me? Yeah, your, your folk and my folk ain't getting along. So, so instead of us having this craziness going on, we're going to go our separate ways. I still love you. I'm going to still cover you. Yeah. But, but God bless me with enough for me to be able to give you some and you live. And I got some and I live. Are you with me? Yeah. The, the thing is this. Before Abraham came and got Lot, they had to be living a decent life for his wife to even have her mindset on needing to continue to live a good life. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Listen to me. If you grew up on EBT and all of a sudden now you got a six-figure income job, it's going to be hard for you to go back to EBT because you've been away from EBT a little bit too long. But I need to tell you, I can have a six-figure income and EBT can still be my friend. Hey, hey, hey. Matter of fact, anybody got something they want to say? Because they're going to be cheap by the state. They buy lobster and shrimp. And are, you, are you with me? And the bad part about it is we used to not be ashamed of the food stamp. I used to carry them at work. Go to 7-Eleven, get me a hot dog and a soda. 
and get the change back. Right. Are you with me? But sometimes you get people when they move into a status where they believe that they got it goes and all. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for them to get away from that no matter what the situation is that causes you to be removed. It seems as if it's too hard for you to walk away because you have been engrafted in that thing that you are comfortable in. Amen. Have I got a witness? So now when we get down to this portion, we find that Abraham says, listen, nephew, I got two pieces of land. I got two pieces of land. I'm going to talk to somebody. Y'all don't throw that at me. I'm going to talk about somebody. I got two pieces of land. And I need you to listen. Abraham didn't say, I'm going to take this, you take that. Because that's the kind of person that Abraham was. But he said, nephew, you, you choose what you want. He said, if you choose the right, then I'll go to the left. If you choose the left, then I'll go to the right. But see, listen. On the left side, it was all green and stuff. Yeah. It had that pretty water mm -hmm. glistening all over the lake. Yes. It was printable. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and the Bible says that was the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then on the right side, he said it was the land of Canaan. It didn't look as luscious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, listen. Yeah. But because of the lifestyle that, hey, that Lot lived, he looked and he saw the greenery, yes, scenery. Yes. Amen. And he said, look, that right there. Now, some, some, some scholars will tell you, some theologians will tell you, maybe he was looking at it being healthy for his cattle. Yes. All green and, and healthy, watering holes for his cattle. Yes. But I come by to tell you that he was looking at how plush that was looking yes. compared to how raggedy this was looking. And he stepped back and said, my food deserved to be over here where it's cushy, cushy. And not walking through the sand, getting pebbles in her feet. I, 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 don't need, I need somebody to help me. I need somebody. I ain't got time to be rubbing no ass off her feet. She need to walk in this good green grass, but she ain't got no I, I, I need I need y'all to know. It, it looked good over there. And I think if folk came and they seen how well we was living, then folks would think we got it goes and on. But, but, but I need you to understand something. Everything that looks good on the outside. Yeah, hallelujah. Ain't it amazing? Listen, ain't it amazing yeah. that when Abram went to the right where it was raggedy, God immediately spoke to him and he said, everything to this side. Now it belongs to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. That's a lesson all within itself. When you're willing and humble enough to say, you can take the best and leave me the rest, God will take the raggedy of the raggedy and make it the best of the best because of your humility. Have I got a witness? So listen, the problem is this. If Lot was Abraham's nephew, I know that Abraham was sharing with Lot the things that God was sharing with him. Yes. Yes. So I know Lot, Lot got information that Sodom was corrupt. Yes. Yes. That it looked good, but on the inside, them folk over there was deep in sin. That, that God was about ready to flip that thing upside down. But if I want to impress my boo, I'm going to ignore the red, the red flags. I, 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 I'm getting ready to talk about somebody. I, I need some help. Tell me, y'all got my help. I need y'all to have my back because they're going to get mad at me. Really quick. Listen, tell me y'all
Amen. 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 Y'all ain't out the doghouse. Y'all do the same thing. Yeah. She 36, 24, 36. Yeah, yeah. She got long hair that she paid for. It looked good. She paid a lot of money for it because it's in there. It looked like it's hers. You get her home, she take out her teeth. She take those pads out. Uh-huh. And you found out that that wasn't that good. But look at me. Come on here, somebody. Uh-huh. <laughs> My daddy said, don't get in trouble. I'm just giving it to you how God gave it to me. How I got a witness. So now listen. So when we get back into the heart of this, what happened is, Lot ignored the warning signs. Amen. He ignored the red flags. He ignored the conversation and the advice from his uncle. But isn't it amazing that his uncle, being a praying man, didn't have to say much on the outside for God to honor what his heart was saying on the inside. And I don't know who you are, but I challenge you to make sure you got an Abraham in your life that will pray for you without ceasing because sometimes we get a little bit ahead of what God wants for us and it takes an Abrahamic prayer, a covenant with God for us to be able to obtain the favor that rests upon our Abraham. Have I got a witness? So when we begin to look at this, we find in chapter number 19, watch this. God is still sending these signs about what's going on. He allows two angels to come into the city. And I need you to know something. When God is about ready to do something, he's going to send warning first. And he sent these two angels. And the Bible says that, that the Lot went in, to the edge of the city and brought them in. Mm. Now these angels are coming because they had a message. Mm -hmm. And these angels were coming because it was their way of escape. Yeah. Before destruction came to the city. Mm. Yes, yes. And if you didn't understand how bad this city was, mm. the Bible says that late in the evening time, mm. it didn't say a couple of men knocked on the door. But it said all of them. Yeah. Young and old. Yes. And y'all thought that this stuff with man's and man's just started happening. Yeah. But all the way here in Genesis, it said that they knocked on the door and told him, where did two men? Hallelujah. They didn't identify them as angels because in the nature of sin, you will not recognize the power of the Holy Ghost in a way that you will be fearful simply because sin feels good. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. But if some new people in town knock on the door, hey, them two men y'all got in there. He said, bring them out because we want to have sex with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all don't believe y'all don't believe to look at it. Yes, yes. The Bible said it. Yeah. Bring them out. Lot said, no. Hold up, slow up. <laughs> that ain't right. right. He said, here, won't you take my two virgin daughters? Mm. But when sin got you and it's yeah. twisted around your mind and got you feeling that you're going to do what you want to do, yeah. you ain't looking at no girl. You're not looking at what's right even though it was wrong. But back in those days, I guess you didn't have to be married for you to be doing all that kind of stuff because he offered them up. Yeah. But the men said, no. We don't want her. We want them. All right, all right, all right. Are you listening to me? Right. Have you ever been in a situation where it seemed as if your enemy came to get something from you that wasn't normal? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. He he wanted to come and get he, he he wanted to come and get your habit because your praise was too strong for him to. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I will stop right there. I'm, my dad said I'm getting trouble. I'm, I'm starting to feel myself a little bit. I'm, I'm lining up. So listen. So he offered them his daughters, but they didn't want his daughters. They wanted the men. Are you listening to me? And the Bible began to to to, to declare that that the angels still began to prep them for what was about to happen. Now we're at a point of no return. Now God is saying this right here has been sicker than all sickness of every piece of sickness that I've ever sickly seen. Have I got a witness? In other words, you can identify the power of the angel that is there and now you want to be so in sin that you want to sleep with an angel. Yeah. My appointed servants, yeah. you want to sleep with them. Now I need you to understand that you're going to sleep with the enemy for the rest of your life because I'm going to tell. 
this mother up. Tell her you're a witness. So verse number 15 says, at daybreak, the angel urged Lot on. Get up. Take your wife, your two daughters who are here, uh, or you will be swept away in the punishment. Now listen. How are you going to tell me that punishment is coming on the land? Amen. Ain't going to tell me that I came to get you out. Mm. Ain't going to tell me that it's going to be bad. Huh. But you're going to give me all the instructions I need to move on. All right. And it seems as if me and my daughters got it together. Yeah. Because it says that the daughters' husbands, they laughed and was joking and acting crazy. In other words, I don't believe it. I'm thinking that they wanted to sleep with the angels too. And you listen to me. Yeah. If your boo thing don't want to listen to sound instructions, yeah. you need to keep going and not look back. Yeah. Because at one point or time and another, that boo thing gonna get you into a situation where punishment is gonna come on the entire situation, and you will be punished for something that you didn't do. Yeah. I got a witness. Yeah. So the Bible simply says that now they got to a place where the angel has begun to give them encouragement. The angel begins to give them instructions. The angel begins to set the tone. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody right here. Because there's so many of us, listen, and I don't want to talk about just our church life. I want to talk about our life life. There are so many of us that are attached to all of the wrong stuff. There are so many of us that have some things that we have a hard time letting go of. There's so many of us that seem to be in love with the tangible and the untangible. But my Bible tells me over in Psalms, I believe it's 146, it says, put not your trust in men or in the sons of men. In other words, it says, because they are no help. They ain't going to help you get out of these situations. Matter of fact, they'll help you get in more trouble than they will get you out of trouble. So you need to put your eyes, put your eyes on Jesus. And if Jesus says, let it go, then you want to let it go. If Jesus says, stop want to stop doing it. If Jesus said, sell that car, then you want to sell that car. The problem is, sin has got you so wrapped up that you can't hear the voice of God and respond because it feels better. Are you listening? Yeah. So now we find the angel told the punishment was coming. In verse 16, now Lot hesitated. <laughs> How would Jesus tell you something? You've got the audacity to hesitate. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason why some of us don't have the blessings we're supposed to have. That's right. Because Jesus said, the door is open. Yeah. Walk through it. And you say, but God, uh, hey, but, but God, uh, listen, perfect example of this is when he told Moses that I need you to go back into Egypt mm. and I need you to tell Pharaoh. Mm. And Moses said, but, uh, mm. I'm of uncircumcised lips, and God said, but uh, I'm going to send your brother, since you can't seem to talk for folk to understand, you can say, I would have doubted to do, and your brother don't know what you said, and going to tell him what I said that came from what you said, even though Pharaoh didn't understand what you said, your homie understood what you said, because you understood what I said. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So all it takes, listen, it takes for you to respond when God says move and stop hesitating because one hesitation will call the door to close that may not be open again for a long time. All right, yeah, yeah. He says, but because the Lord his compassion for him, the men grabbed his hand and his wife's hand. Now listen, he hesitated. But the angels was on assignment. Yes, yes. And when you hesitate, when God really got something for you, God has sent something to snatch you up. Even all right, all right, all right, all right, That's where they got that song. When I move, you move. <laughs> Just like that. Yes, like that. So when God sent the angels down to tell Lot, it's time to push. Yeah. And Lot says, but, uh, and I believe at that moment, Lot was more concerned with what folk and his wife was going to say yeah. about leaving all of this bloodshed, yeah. 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 I got to leave my jewels. Yeah. I got to yeah. leave this green grass. I, <laughs> I got to leave all of this chicken and yeah. steak and hot water cornbread. I, I got to leave these neck bones in here. I got to leave these college greens, these black eyed peas. I got to leave them. Right. Sweet potato pie and peach to the collar. I got to leave it. 
right here. I don't know if I can leave it. It's so good to leave. God, why do you want me to leave this land of all of this goodness? And God is saying, I'm trying to save your life. Because if I kill you right here, you'll never get a chance to have collard greens to the second power. You'll never get a chance to see what good season that ball tastes like. You're not, you're not, I'm homeless, I don't know. But you'll never get a chance to experience the true essence of what God is if you get stuck right here in sin. Because my job is not to let you die in sin. You can't die in sin and inherit the kingdom of God. But yet you got to be free and detached from the sin in order for God to be able to move in your life. Because once you get attached to sin, it's hard for you to walk away from the things that keep you bound. Yeah. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Yes. So God will send angels. Listen, sometimes he'll send angels in the form of men. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And the same men or women that entice you to sin, mm. God will send men and women to bring you from the enticement of right, sin. Right, the problem is this. You've got to stop looking at what's on the outside yeah. and have enough discernment to realize what's on the inside yeah. to identify if it's lie or if it's memory. Right. Have I got a witness? Because you can get two boogers in the same church, one with their hands up shouting and the other one with their arms crossed. And the biggest devil is the one that wants to be seen the most. And if you can't discern, yeah. you'll start acting like the demon instead of like the angel. All right. yeah. Because it's comfortable. And it's attractive. Josh, get that moment out your head. I see it right now. You saw it, yeah, yeah. It ain't her. It ain't her. It ain't her. <laughs> so he hesitated. But the angels grabbed the hand. He said, now Paul, this is going to go down. And you're not supposed to go down. In other words, the assignment that God gave me says, save them. And not just give information and leave them. <laughs> so if my assignment is to pull you from where you are, then I've got to do that before I let everything else happen. Right. If I expect to receive from God what he has for me yeah. based off of my obedience to complete yeah. my assignment. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'm here because of my assignment. Yeah. And it don't matter what people say in between now and the conclusion of my assignment. And only God knows how long the assignment. Yeah. The assignment may be three more months or it might be 13 more years. Oh. But what God says for the assignment, man cannot move me from the assignment because I can't move until the assignment is complete. And the angel of the Lord will make sure he lets me know, job well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. Yeah. 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 Now the problem is this. Yes. I got your hand. All right. But how many of y'all get ready to look back? Hallelujah. See, because something back there, uh -huh. him, her, they, it, steals and grafted inside you. That's right. Your heart. Yes. You find yourself in the middle of the night sometimes, smiling Amen. about what it was. Yeah. <laughs> But I heard an old philosopher say this. We can get farther looking through the windshield of our car than we can look at the rear view. Right. Simply because, watch this. Simply because, if I'm always looking back, I don't know what's in front of me. Yes, yes. So that means I don't know how to get to where I'm supposed to go. That's right. Without going to you back further in your past. Then going past your past right. to get to your pasture Hallelujah. of milk and honey. Mm. Yes. Yes. Listen, that one, that one got me down. Because I find myself sometimes, can I just be transparent? Yes. I, I find myself sometimes looking back at to what it was. Yes. Yes. And getting in the flesh and talking about if I had to do a little bit different, how much further I would get along today. Hallelujah. Are you with me? If, if, if I had if I had put this three dollars over on this side, I probably would have had this. If I had to get that, I probably would have had that. But but what I failed to realize is this: when the angel pulled me out, he pulled me out because I would have had that. But what would my reference to God have been? Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm trying to help you before I preach to you. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And sometimes we have 
such a reliance and, dis uh, and dependent on things and people that we miss our, uh, our opportunity to be faithful to the God who placed us here, who's protected us, who's helped us. Even in a life of sin, God still has his hand on us when he has purpose for our life. He will hold us until we make it up in our mind, till we get the hand of the angel, till we move from the place because in the warning sign, God will keep his hand in our hand and allow us to know that as long as you can trust in me, I can pull you from where you are and place you to where you need to be. But you've got to be willing to go at the time when it's time to go. So Abram, the uh, lot here, he had hesitation, but the angel grabbed him and moved them on. Verse 17 says, as soon as the angels got them outside, one of them says, run for your life. How many times have God sent you some kind of sign and told you to run? Most of the time, God sends you those signs before you get too involved. That's right, that's right. That's right. And you still sitting there like you got cement boots on. <laughs> that ain't being a tree planted by the little bird You know what I'm trying to say. You're not being like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. You are sitting there because you're stubborn. You're sitting there because it feels good. You're sitting there because you don't believe what God is saying is prevalent because it looks too good to be what God is saying that it really is. So you stay there. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then you find yourself all messed up. Yes, Lord. Later on because you get too far in mm -hmm. to get out without help. That's right. That's right. And watch this. You didn't have help getting there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you showed me help getting out of there. That's right. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you didn't get there by yourself. You didn't, you didn't get, get there by yourself. yourself. But you ain't going to leave by yourself either. You ain't going to leave by yourself either. <laughs> so now he's got them out. He's got them outside of the city. Oh, Lord. Now, now Lot, I believe at this point, that says, hold on a minute. These angels have come. Yes. These men are trying to sleep. Mm. with these angels mm. but yet these angels are saying come on you got to get out of here yeah, the amazing thing is the bible says that when the angels began to pray mm -hmm. that that even when the door got open mm -hmm. the angels the, the men couldn't come in and mess with the angels because when you're on assignment and yeah. god's head for protection is around you yeah. i don't care how much you're outnumbered yeah. when god is for you yeah. he's more than the world against you yeah. and the bible simply says that when the door opens the men became blind and couldn't see. Now, now how is it that I saw my way to the door, Pop? I saw my way to knock. Matter of fact, I saw them old sexy angels when they came into the city. I wasn't even next to them. I just seen them, all of that stuff. It just glowed. And it, Mike, Mike, ain't it amazing that a fine girl walk in the room, you ain't even got to be in the same area, but it's something about her persona that says, wow. <laughs> so they saw these men come and then they went to where these men were. If you didn't follow them, how you knew where they were? Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. But now I see them when they came. Now I'm knocking at the door because I want to see them again. But it's amazing when the door reopened, I can't see no more. <laughs> Can I talk like that? All right. I can't see because the power of God rested upon the angels was the thing that allowed heaven to respond to the prayers of the angels and because I'm on assignment I don't care what comes to destroy me or what comes to destroy my purpose and my assignment when God says to move and I send it to him he will allow for something to happen that only he can allow to happen right. now how is it that every man came to sleep with me but now every man can't even see me right. and listen to me Let's look at it from this side. It had to become devastating to the men because how is it that I'm so eager to have something happen and all of a sudden, out of a blink of an eye, I can't see no more. Mm -hmm. I want to help somebody right here. Y'all yeah. looking at me? Yes. Y'all see me? Yes. On the count of three, I want everybody to close their eyes. All right. All right. All right. Don't open them until I say open them. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to help me do that? Yes. Y'all see me, right? Yes. Let me give you my good side. On <laughs> count three, close your eyes. One, two, three. Close your eyes. Don't open. Open your eyes. Let me 
Y'all yeah. see? No. Yeah. Yeah. Why you don't see? No people <laughs> know. <laughs> Why you don't see? They no, disappear. Huh? You disappear. Ah, I didn't disappear. You just can't see. Yes. <laughs> I want you to catch it. Because their eyes were open, but they still was unable to visually see. Because the power of God blinded them because of their intent to do harm to the assignment by which God sent and to the service that he sent to fulfill the assignment. So therefore, I need you to understand, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter how people come up against you. It doesn't matter how people dislike you. It doesn't matter about none of those things. When you are on assignment, God will make sure that he puts everything in place to keep the enemy from messing you over and your son not being fulfilled. So the Bible, it simply says that now they were at a place where the men couldn't see. The angels had the open opportunity to get the family to the edge of the city. To finish giving the assignments that they needed in order to overcome what they thought was good. Amen. Have I got a witness in here? Amen. And then it began to talk about these other little things that was going on in the minds of Lot. Uh -huh. But now the angels even gave him enough time to find anybody else in the land that wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. Have I got a witness? Right. And so God now over here in this place called Cedar. Yeah. Oh, God has said now it's time mm -hmm. for us to leave the land of depression. Amen. He said it's time for us to leave the land of lack. Mm -hmm. He said it's time for us to leave the place that we were mm -hmm. simply because all of the evil that was in the land, yeah, God is ready to destroy the evilness of the land. I want y'all to catch this. He didn't say he wants to destroy the church. Amen. But basically what he wants to do is he wants to destroy the memories that's keeping the church from moving forward. And I need you to know that these memories are not just memories in the church. But some of these memories are memories that you've had in your life. That boo that you thought was going to be your boo for life. You need to tell boo that I see you later boo boo. Because you were in for a season. And I don't need you taking the place of my reason, people. Yeah. I need y'all to know something before I get too far along. That there are people and things in your life, some for a season and some for a reason. Yeah. And I heard a young man by the name of Devon Franklin say this. Do not let your season stuff or people take a place of a co-star in your film of life. In other words, when somebody is supposed to have a cameo appearance, that means they ain't supposed to say nothing. They're supposed to show up for a minute just for that scene and be gone. But there are too many of us that's still holding on to that cameo appearance type of thing. And here we are 20 years later still looking back at what we thought it was supposed to be. But now I come to tell you that the angel is ready to pull you from the place of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's ready to tell you to run to the hills where there is safety. Have I got a witness in the house? But now we find out that here that she pushes me, she pushes me, she pushes me. We find out that here we have a place where Lot and his girls, they said we're going to go head on and follow the instruction of the angels. And I want you I want you to know that when the scripture said, I'm looking to the hill from which cometh my help because all of my help it comes from the Lord with that being said God sent me two angels to help me to find the hill from which cometh my help I want y'all to know that when the night we're going to look to the hill from which cometh our help. 
<laughs> and every single week we're going to look <laughs> to the hill <laughs> from which cometh our help. <laughs> we got to recognize <laughs> the angels when they appear. <laughs> we got to recognize <laughs> the voice of the Lord <laughs> when he's spoken. <laughs> we got to recognize <laughs> when it's God and when it's the enemy. <laughs> from those that won't. And I got a witness. Now the Bible said that Abraham and his daughters, they began to move towards the place which is the hills. I hear you pushing me up and I'm going to listen to you. And as they began to look the angel said, go on over there and make sure that you don't look back. I'm questioning where was Lot's wife when those instructions came? Because I know when God sends an angel to tell you a word from him that it comes forth with a lot of power and conviction. When a man says what he says, it may you feel one type of way. But when God tells him to say what he says, it comes across another way. where God spoke through the men and the women of God and you began to get shields when the words came forth something about his words it wasn't what he said but it was how it was said from which it came for him to say and it made the atmosphere cold because God was breathing his breath upon you to allow you to know it's him and it ain't other men. So now, where was Lot's wife when the voice from heaven came? Where was Lot's wife when Lot got it? Where was Lot's wife when his daughters got it? Where was Lot's wife if you are a good wife and you're following the leadership of your God sick husband, if he is going straight, where was Lot's wife when it said, Follow him as he follows the Lord? Where?
ago. Don't look back to six years ago. But you need to look from right now to right then. Because what God got now is better than what you had before. Just don't look back. Yeah. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. 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 Listen to me. Looking back should only be your way of using it to step on. To go higher. But when you look back to reminisce and believe you could have did it, had a different outcome had you made different decisions, that's when you get stuck like the song. The bad thing about it is this, the Bible says even today that there's supposed to still be evidence of her in the pile that people saw. It's supposed to still be there. Notice something. The Bible never gave her name. Mm. Notice something else. That the Bible never talked explicitly about her. Mm. But it gave you enough reference about her yeah. to warn you about you. Yeah. And I need you to know that some of the most prominent stories in the Bible came from people that didn't have a name attached to it. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Because when the Bible spoke of the woman that was hunched over for 18 years, yeah. but kept being in the, in, the, in the sanctuary cleaning, worshiping, and serving God, and when he came in and spoke to her and she healed up, was healed, all right, all right. it didn't give her name. Yeah. In fact, it didn't give nothing else about her except that she had been like that for 18 years yeah. and that she was inside of the temple when God showed up. Mm -hmm. Beloved, basically what that's saying is this. She didn't allow her condition to be the thing that kept her from her position. Are you listening? And I wish it had to elaborate a little bit more so it was told about how she testified about the day she was healed and not the year she was sick. And our problem is we talk too much about what it was instead of what it became. And when you testify it's all right for you to tell what you went through. Yes. But when you're more focused on what you went through than when God brought you out of it, yes. you're still looking back. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. When the old songwriter said, my soul looks back and wonder <laughs> how I got over. Yes. You know how your soul looked back and wonder how it got over? When your soul is anchored in God. Yes. The Holy Spirit has a way of keeping your neck from swiveling too much. Yeah. Amen. Right. I'm trying to I'm trying to get to another Dodger game when they're giving away bobbleheads. <laughs> and people say, why you want a bobblehead? See, people think they are bobbleheads in collections, but there's a message in a bobblehead. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because watch, no matter what the situation is, you hit that bobblehead, guess what's gonna happen? The heel on the front. <laughs> you say. You know what I'm talking to you about? You don't know if you saying yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, doing yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm trying to say is, we can't keep going forward, listen to the Holy Spirit, right. if we got new snacks like a Bible. Yeah. 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 I used to hear folks say, you stiff neck Christians. We ain't got stiff neck Christians no more. We got Bible head Christians now. Yeah. Because let me show you what a Bible head Christian to do about it. A Bible head Christian do like this, right? And if they shout over there, that's what? <laughs> if they shout over here, then. And if they shout right where he is, he didn't do like it. He's very indecisive. Because he doesn't have any strength in the thing that holds up the thing that would cause him to think clearly. Ain't you glad that Bible gets with this plastic and they got nothing on the inside? <laughs> But I need you to just pray for all this, this spiritual walk That's right, that's right. Because every single time God tells them to move, yeah. is what they do. <laughs> but I would, that I say, God, take the looseness of my neck. Yeah. Put your hands on my hands. Yeah, yeah. So when you say go, I do this. Yeah. And every time my neck want to go, you just. Amen, amen. Because at the end of the day, yeah. Only 
what you do for Christ. Yes. And last, have I got a witness? What am I trying to say? You've been hurting your life, but it's time for you to stop looking back at it. You've been hurt in relationships. You've been hurt on your job. You've been hurt in friendships. Mike, we've been hurt on the fishing boats. Yeah. Been out there all day and not catching nothing. <laughs> we smile because we say we have a good time, but on the inside, we like, man, we just spent all this money. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying they charge me eight dollars for a hamburger and fourteen dollars for a bottle of water, and I didn't even catch a bit. <laughs> but the experience and the moment that you can sit and listen to God. Yeah in the middle of all that water. The moment you can sit in thousands of feet in water, my mind always goes back to Peter wasn't even in nothing this deep. But he walked over. Now listen to me. I got crazy faith. But that's too much water for me to be trying to walk over. I look at that ocean and I say, this is the same kind of ocean that God told Moses to raise up a staff. Yeah. And he made it all go back. Yeah. Yeah. And I sit there and I look and I say, what would it be like for God to part this ocean right now? Yeah. 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 For us to just walk through. Yeah. Sometimes I just be want God to clear up the ocean enough for me to see where the fish is. <laughs> but the moment that you can spend time out there in all of his splendor and glory. Yeah. Why would you want to look back at anything that's not right? right. See the girl. It's time now. The angel has come to pull us from the years of hurt. Right. At home, the years of hurt. Yeah. On a job, the years of hurt. From folk. Yes. Yeah. Not only that, he came to pull us from the myth mm. and from the 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 tongue that's been put on this house. And my Bible says that at the name of Jesus, my Bible also says that we're supposed to pray for those that spitefully use us. The ones that talk about us. The ones that drag our name through the mud. Let me tell you something. From, from what folks say, they threw us in the dirt. But can I tell y'all something? Anything beautiful must go in the dirt first. Because a rose does not become a beautiful rose first unless the ugly seed have been thrown in the dirt. The watering and the fertilizing and the tilling over a process of time causes that seed to come through the dirt in the form of a beautiful rose. So from today on, this is what I want my mindset to be. And I want y'all to say this after I say it. I want y'all to say, thank God for the dirt. Thank God for the dirt. Matter of fact, if y'all run into anybody that ain't got nothing good to say to us, you know what you tell them? You tell them, listen, why don't you get that beach pail of dirt that you got and go get a bulldozer? I need a little bit more dirt. <laughs> and so while you dump it, you know, don't shortchange me with yeah. your dirt. Give me all the dirt you gotta get. Yeah. Because in a minute, when this rose come through, yeah. don't come up in this garden. All right, all right. Because the same way God had the hedge around that house, but when the door opened, all those men became blind. He may not blind the men that come and try to pick flowers, yeah. but he'll keep them back. All right, all right. You know why? Because if they ain't for you, then they're against you. That's right. And they'll smile. The old song says, smiling faces tell lies. The folks will smile to get up in here. And then they'll try to tear down everything that God is building up. But I come by to tell you, I got some watchmen on the wall. I got some watchmen in LA that's praying. I got some watchmen in Long Beach that's praying. I got some watchmen in Downey that's praying. I got some watchmen in Florida that's praying. I got some. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, yes. So they pray. Yes. All we got to do is work. That's right. Are you with me? Yes, yes. What am I trying to say? Don't look back. Y'all listening to me? Yes. Don't look back. 
Don't look back. What's going to be our new saying for a little while? Thank God for the dirt. Let me hear you. When people hear you say that, you tell them you had to be there. <laughs> you had to be there to know. Are you with me? With all heads bowed, our eyes closed. This is the time for us to extend our invitation. Even though we know that everyone here remembers, we still don't take it lightly that God wants us to extend that invitation because it's not just for accepting Christ for the first time, but it's also rededicating your life. And if that's you, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. And the next call is if you want to be a member. Amen. Amen. I see that we're all members and that they are still roaming at the cross. Right. See, our, our youngest grandson is in the house today. It's amazing. I had him with me yesterday and we was out doing some moving around. And, and uh, we had to deliver some food for a catering event. And so all the, all the ladies that was in there working, they was just, oh, he's so adorable. And I shut him down. I said, this is mission. He came, he came to pray for y'all, leave y'all an anointing. This is mission. And before I left there, all the people was calling him little bishop. And uh, I need you to know that you got the power to speak life. Are you listening to me? Now, was I speaking the, amount, the mantle of bishop over his life? No, but I was speaking the covering of bishop over his life. The same covering that God covers a bishop with, I was calling it out over my youngest grandson. Why? Because he's somebody that has purpose right. even at seven months That's right. and as long as I'm on the wall on the wall watching I'm going to keep him lifted in prayer All right. ain't that right yes. Keep yes. Looking. ain't that right Bishop yes. amen yes. I'm just glad my, my wife she had a hard time with him this morning getting her dressed getting him dressed but she said we're going to be there <laughs> amen We're excited. So if you all have been joining on to our Monday night Bible studies, women, it will resume this Monday. Amen. It will resume tomorrow night. Um, took a break for the holiday. And then Wednesday night, we're going to meet here. We're going to dig in the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time to work. So put your working shoes on. Put your gloves on. Let's till some soil. Amen? All right. All right. Amen. Let's take up our love offering so we can get prepared to go.